Okay gang, we're finally at the regression equation. So let's review a little bit of vocab from chapter one. In chapter one, when we talked about X and Y, we called them the explanatory and response variable respectively. So let's, let's pick up that, that idea again and just add a few more vocab terms onto it. So Y is called the dependent or response variable. Uh, we always called Y the dependent variable in a math class. In stats, we tend to call it response. And X is referred to as the independent predictor or explanatory, excuse me, explanatory variable. And so if these are the two terms that we came up with in chapter one, explanatory and response. Or like I said, in a math class, we call it the independent and dependent variable. And with that, we're gonna fit a regression equation into some data. So when I say reg a regression equation, we're talking about a line for the most part in this class. Now regression can be any type of math function. It can be linear, it can be quadratic, cubic, exponential, but for Math 43 and 43W, we're gonna stick with linear regression. So let's take a look at our famous equation of a line, but just the letters are a little bit different from what you might remember in your math class. So this linear relationship, y equaling a plus bx, is the equation of a straight line. Now again, from your math days, I think you're used to mx plus b. I just want you to see we've changed the letters. They're not m and b anymore, they're a and b. a is over here, b is over here. So it's a little bit differently written and also has different letters than your math equation, but it, it's the same thing. We're talking about a line. The value of b, called the slope of the line, is the amount by which y increases when x increases by one unit. The value a, called the intercept, or again, in math we usually called it the y-intercept of the line, is the height of the line above the value x equaling zero. All right, and we're gonna pick up all sorts of equations for how to find this a and b. This gigantic beast of an equation, right, the slope. If we wanted to find our slope, we would find all of our deviations from the x variable, multiply them by all the deviations against the y variable, add them all together, and then divide that by the deviations, or I should say the sum of the deviations squared on the x variable. That's a whole lot of stuff we would have to calculate. And once you got b, then you could find a by this formula, y bar minus b x bar, a lot of shenanigans to find the slope and the y-intercept. So I'm just gonna tell you right here, we will get A and B from our TI-83 or TI-84 calculators. And then when you find your A and B, we're going to put them in the form of a line and we have a new vocab term for that. So if I just move this up a little bit before we get to the actual example on this page, we will write the equation of the least squares regression line, or we have this acronym LSRL, as Y with this little symbol over it, equaling A plus BX. A is gonna be our Y-intercept, B is gonna be our slope. And this little symbol um, indicates that y, and we would say this out loud as y hat, is a prediction of y resulting from a substitution of a particular x value into the equation. And I know that sounds like a lot. We're going to play this out explicitly in example 10. But if we just take a step back, we're writing the equation of a line. We're going to plot a lot of points. If they look linear, we're going to slap a line on top of it, and that's the equation we're looking for. Now, when you hear me refer to LSRL, least squares regression line, there's other names for the LSRL. So if you hear me refer to something like my linear model, when I say model, I don't mean like America's Next Top Model or anything like that. When we use the phrase modeling in statistics, it means we're taking old data, data can't even say it, old data, putting a function on top of it. And again, in this case, it'll be a line. And we call that predicting line a model. We're going to model it data with this line. We're going to model it and guess into the future. Sometimes we refer to it, we refer to it as a predicting equation. 
Because typically we try and predict into the future. We want to take past data and I want to predict what's going to happen. It would be great if I was able to take past data on the stock market and predict when it would be at a high or take unemployment and predict when it would be low. Or I would love to take um, past polling data from elections and predict who's going to win the next presidential race. So that's what this whole idea of regression is about. Taking past data, slapping a math function onto it, and in this case we'll be doing lines, but slapping that math function on and predicting into the future. So again, we could call it the linear model, I could call it a predicting equation, I could call it, um, let's see, I could just say what's my predicting line. Right? I might just call it y hat. All of those mean the same thing. So I just, again, I'm, I'm making a line that's going to allow me to predict. Okay, great. I want to be able to predict. So with that, we're going to look at our calculator function and figure out how our calculator will get us A and B, the y-intercept and the slope, without us having to do all of the shenanigans in here. So let me scooch this up so we can see example 9. Okay, so there we go. So in example nine, it says you are given the following set of observations for variables X and Y. So again, let's just take note that we have two numerical variables. All right, we've seen this data set. I think we had it back in example five. And the directions say write the LSRL for this data. So I'm gonna hit pause on this part of the video, I'm going to fire up my computer and then I'm going to show you how your calculator can get all of this for you. But I'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, bye. Hey Math43, so we're going to take a look at example 9 together. It says write the LSRL for this data and this was the data set that we used back in example 5. So when you see this acronym LSRL, that's asking you to find the least squares regression line. And that might sound like a lot, and it, it's, it is, but really we're finding the equation of a line. So we've plotted some points on a graph, and now we want to get the line that best connects them, the line of best fit. Or you might refer to it as your linear model or your predicting line. There's a bunch of different vocab terms we can use to mean the same thing. But at the end of the day, we need a slope and a y-intercept. So back in your math classes, you probably remember the equation of the line, the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We're going to use the same idea here. We want a slope and a y intercept, but we're going to use slightly different letters. So in stats, a is going to stand for your y intercept, and b is going to stand for your slope. So we have y intercept plus slope times your variable x. So y hat, our predicting line, right? We can predict a y value. We can predict a response with this equation a plus bx, again, x being my explanatory variable. So let's, let's go through the mechanics on, on this example, and then I'm just going to show you a quick applet to maybe give you some ideas about what on earth this least squares regression line is. Okay, so I put my x values into L1 and I put my y values into L2. And let me go over to the calculator and show you what I got going on here. Right, so L1's got my explanatory variable, L2's got my response variable. Great. I always think it's a good idea after data entry to do a little stat plot. And if I look at my plots and how they're set up right now, I can see I have plot one on and plots two and three off. Plot 1 is a scatter plot, and I've got L1 against L2, so that's great. So now I'm just going to hit zoom 9 and see what I'm working with. So if I look at this, I, I can see the line that would go between them. I'm, I'm going to try and move my, my mouse as best I can. That's not even the best I can do. But there's some kind of line going in here. Right? It's a negative relationship. That line would have a negative slope. And what I'd like my calculator to do is just figure out the equation of that line. I don't really want to guess it. I want to make my calculator do it. So if I'm looking, right, somewhere in there, all right? So the calculator commands that we use to find the equation of the LSRL, the equation of your predicting line, is the same calculator commands that we use to find the correlation coefficient, R. So we're going to still go with stat calc 8. 
Well, for your correlation coefficient, you only needed L1 and L2. We're going to tack on a third piece. We previewed this in example three with the New York City Marathon data, um, but let's, let's officially do it here. So when I say you're going to tack on a third piece, this is ultimately what you want your calculator to do. You want your calculator to get your slope and your y-intercept, but then you also want it to just graph that line. Can you overlay the graph on this scatter plot we have? And in your math classes, instead of hitting second and y equals, if we just hit y equals, here's where all of our equations can go, our math equations, right? So up top here are your stat plots, and these are your math equations. So what I'd like my calculator to do is find the equation of that line and then just drop it in here so that it'll show up on my graph. So let, let's practice that. And I want you to remember, when I hit y equals, I have all these options, y1, y2, y3. You can scroll all the way down. I think you have up to 10 options. You'll have to forgive me for not having it memorized. Yeah, you have 10 of them, and then that's it. But that's plenty, we only need one. Okay, so here we go. Let's go back to our home screen. All right, so we're gonna go stat. We're gonna go calc. Right. When I looked at that data, it did look linear, linear, negative, and I would say strong linear and negative. So I'm going to hit option eight. So we're going to go L1, comma, L2. Okay. Now add on another comma because we're going to tack on that third piece. So here's where your Y variables live. Hit your VARS key. It's just to the left of your clear key. All right. And from this screen, let's go over to y -var. so hit your right arrow, okay? You will always be in function mode in this class. We'll never leave function mode, so just hit enter or hit the number one, and then you can pick from any of these y variables. So since we're just starting out, I'll go with y1. Uh, it is Friday night, so I might get a little crazy later on and go with y2. We'll see, but we're going to go with y1 right now, okay? So when I do all of this, let me hit enter. You can see there my slope and my y-intercept. So keep these numbers in mind. My y-intercept is 4. My slope is negative 1.3. Maybe you remember that r, that correlation co coefficient from example 5 of negative 8, excuse me, negative 0.8971. But here's our slope and our y-intercept. So 4 minus 1.3x. Now take a look at your y equals. All right. Do you see how it's been dropped into y1? And now when I hit graph or zoom 9, you can see that that line, that line of best fit, getting overlaid onto your scatter plot. So just watch for a moment. Let's say, let me go into my y equals and just clear this out, okay? I want you to, I'm not I want you, I'm gonna rerun this calculator command, but I am gonna choose y2 this time. Again, Friday night, time to get a little nutty. So let me go back to my home screen. Let me hit stat. Let's go to calc, option eight. All right, let's go L1, comma, L2, and then add that next comma. And this is where you want to tell your calculator where to drop that linear model. All right, and I want to drop it into one of my Y variables, and I'm going to opt for Y2 this time. So let's hit VARS. We'll go to the right to Y VARS. You will always be in function mode. All right, and usually I pick Y1, but now let's just scroll down and hit Y2. Okay, so it's saying here, this calculator string is saying get me the linear model between the explanatory variables in L1, the response variables in L2, and take that linear model and put it into Y2. So I'll hit enter, you're still seeing the same output screen, right, 4 and then negative 1.3. But now take a look at your Y equals. This is over in Y2. This graph is still going to look the same because the line is the line. But that is your line of best fit, okay? Now in terms of lines of best fit, let me scooch over to this website and just show you something that we can, we can mess with here. So if we're looking at this, I, I, I put these five points on here and I, I put them in there, um, the, I made them so that definitely look positive, strong, and linear, right? So if I was gonna draw this line through here, right? If I wanna draw the line through these five points, let me go ahead and show it in this case. You can see it's right there, right? The correlation is basically one, not even basically, it's one. I drew it like this on purpose. And this is just the, the basic line, y equals x, all right? You can see my slope is one, because if I go up one over one, up one over one, or at, really if I go up five over five, that, that ratio of rise over run would be one. 
my slope is 1, and my y-intercept is 0. This is going back to where you're using m and b from your math days. But now watch what happens when I start moving these points. Okay, so let me move these points so that I just have five points. You know, let's move, let's try them this way. That looks pretty good. All right, now I need to adjust this line to try and make it the line of best fit. And I feel like this, this high point here, it's kind of bringing my slope down a little. So I'm gonna, that might be a little too far. All right, I'm gonna move it down a little and I'm gonna just scooch my y-intercept up a little bit, okay? So I, I want you to see what's happening here. If I was going to show the squares, I want you to see why we call this the least squares regression line. So take a look at the squares that I'm building. And this is, or not that I'm building, but that I have. So take a look at this distance from this purple dot to the blue line, right? So there's this vertical drop down. Oops, I moved that. Let me put that there. There we go. There's this vertical drop down, and then they make a square at that distance, right? So from the purple dot to the blue line, I drop down that much and then make a square. Right? From the purple dot to the blue line, I drop down this much and then make that a square. And the game here is to try and minimize the squares. So let me, let me show you what I mean. If I move the line this way, do you see the squares? They got a lot larger, right? If I'm here, they're actually pretty small other than this one is pretty large. And you can move the slope and the y-intercept as much as you want to try and get the smallest amount of squares. That's not too bad. Can I make it better? That's, that's pretty good. Right, so I'm trying to get the least area of squares. Let's see, does that look good if I erase the squares? That's not a bad line, okay? So let me see what, what I was supposed to get. So my guess was my slope was 0.8 and my y-intercept was um, 3.65. So I was a little bit off, right? You can see it was really supposed to be about 0.64 and 7. So, so I was off. Okay, no problem. So let me get another set of five points. So now let's say I did this. Let's just move them, I don't know, here. Okay, let's do that. Maybe that's there. Okay, so where do I want to move this line? I would like to have the smallest amount of squares. So I think I need to move it that way. Let's see if I can do the squares. So I've got some large squares there. Let's see. Does that make them smaller overall? That one's getting pretty large. Let me see if I can drop the slope on that. Oops. I think I need to raise this a little. So it's kind of this guessing game. Ooh, that's terrible. You just start to get better and better at this. And sometimes I need to remove the squares to see them. That's not the worst. So let's, let's take a look. At this point, I think the slope's 0.45 and the y-intercept is 6.7. Oh, I was pretty far off. All right, good job. All right, so you can keep going with this. This is what they're saying. They're saying that really I should have been at 0.16 and 10.93. That would have given me a better looking um, set of squares. So let's try that. Let's keep 0.16 in mind and 10.93. So let me do this and let's do 0.16 and 10.93 is what they were suggesting. Somewhere in there. Oh yeah, that's that's better looking, right? Those are smaller squares. So you can keep playing around with this. This is part of why we have technology to do it because it's kind of hard to do this by hand. All right, so let me undo this, right? And then we can just, we can make as many of these as you want in whatever order you want. Okay, so maybe something like that. Or, I don't know, let's, let's do, yeah, let's do this. Okay, so here, I think I need to make the slope much sharper and move the y-intercept. Oh, it almost won't let me go there. It won't let me go negative. Well, that's okay. I don't need to. Let's, ah, there we go. All right, so that's not bad. Let's see what the squares look like. Let's see, can we make them smaller? I think if I make the slope a little, nope. I don't know, what do you think? Looking pretty good? Let's see without the squares. Do we think we can get it better? I might want to drag it just slightly. No. Like maybe there? Okay. So I'll go here. Here will be my guess. A slope of 1.2 and a slope of 0. Let's see what the real one is. Oh, it was a little bit better this time, right? So that's what this least squares regression line is. It's literally find the least 
area of the squares that you're creating. And these squares are always created by going from your actual y value down to your predicted y value. Okay? And, and that's what we're looking for in terms of least squares. But here's the calculator buttons, right? It's always, if I head back here, it's always stat calc 8, L1, L2, Y1, or, or Y2. Again, Friday night, time to get crazy. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you, bye. Okay, now that you've seen how to do it on your calculator, I'm, I'm gonna run through it again, just in lag time. So I, I always say start with data entry, right? It's ready to go. And then I go to my stat plots and those are also ready to go. That looks linear. I think that looks like a linear model and I wanna slap a line that looks something like that on top of it. And I don't wanna go through all of those equations to find the out values of A and B. I just want my calculator to find me the line of best fit, the least squares regression line. I'm gonna go back to my home screen. We're gonna go with stack calc eight. So the commands or the calculator commands for finding the LSRL are the same as finding R. So I'm gonna go L1 against L2, but here's where we're gonna add in that third option. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tack on Y1 because I want my calculator to take the line that it finds and just plot it here so that it'll show up on my graph. So to get to Y1, I'll add another comma. We will go to VARS, Y VARS, and then it's enter, enter, enter. All right, and I'm going to keep, keep note of these, these numbers. I'm going to start by writing the first three lines of this in a moment. I'm going to write it directly onto my paper. And then we're gonna talk about how you go from your calculator to a midterm level answer. But just as we take note, there's my, my line. My LSRL is now plotting out on my stat plot because not only am I plotting the original data up here in, in plot one, I have my LSRL dropped into Y1. Okay, so let me go back to this screen. And again, I'm gonna copy these first three numbers or these first three lines directly onto my, my paper and then we're gonna get that answer midterm ready. So I have y equaling a plus bx, and they told me what, a was four, and b was negative, whoops, broke my pencil lead, negative 1.3. All right, so let's take that and talk about how we get from our calculator output to a midterm level answer. So the first thing I want you to do, I don't want you to leave this as general A and B, plug in your numbers for A and B. So what I mean by that is we're gonna say instead of A plus BX, I'm gonna say Y is four minus 1.3X. And I don't want plus negative 1.3X. From your math classes, you know that when you add a negative number, you're really subtracting. So that's one thing that I wanna make sure we all do. The next thing I want us to do is change the notation. Don't leave it as Y, but you want to write Y hat. All right, and the difference between these two symbols, this would be an actual Y value from our raw data, and we don't know that, so we are predicting Y values. That's literally what this means, predicted Y values. I will predict a Y value if you give me an X value. And this would be a midterm level answer with a little caveat, all right? And that caveat will play itself out in example 10. If I had some context to X and Y, some actual, some variables with vocab to them, like time and height, or I don't know, weight and time, whatever it would be, I would actually write the words of my variables here. I wouldn't write letters X and Y. I would say something like I can predict height based on your weight. And we'll see that play itself out in example 10. Okay, and I just want to take note, all right, just to go back to your math days, whatever number you get for A, that is your y-intercept. So my y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 4. That's how we always found a y-intercept in math, right? You would let x equal 0 and see what y-value you got back out. And that would happen right now. If I were to let x be 0, right, if x is 0, 1.3 times 0 is 0 and four minus zero is four. That's where it's coming from. So my y-intercept is zero, four, okay. And then I just wanna talk about your slope, which is the number negative 1.3. And yes, we call it B. Um, if you're used to your math classes calling it M, that's fine. I, I'm fine with whichever 
lettering you want to do. It just, I think this might be what you're more familiar with from your math class. And this is where we need to get to in our stat class. So again, YouTube video, Vimeo video, you can see how people are running regression. But at the end of the day, we're gonna put our data in L1 and L2. We're gonna hit stat calc 8, L1, L2, Y1. And if you forget where Y1 is, it's vars, Y vars, function, Y1. And you don't have to pick Y1, right? Again, Friday nights, go a little nuts, pick Y2, maybe Y3. All right, whatever, whatever feels good that night, all right? All right, so I'll catch you over at example 10.